go. Okay, and welcome back to our next session of Digimon Digital World Tabletop, Surveyors of the Digital World, the Solid State Glacier. Three-part title, works every time. Uh, last time we were playing, you guys had a big fight, and you won that fight. Great job. Excellent work. Yeah. Bunch of Digmon <laughs> really went on the attack, supported by a Blue Merrimon behind them. And you guys broke through that wall. Eleanor broke that Blue Merrimon spirit. And at the very end of the battle, a new Digimon introduced itself and seemed willing to talk and chat. So we're going to be getting into that now. Uh, Maddie is unfortunately traveling, so not with us at the moment. However, before we begin, I just want to go over two things. One, I've already told Maddie this, but Eleanor gets a point of inspiration for just destroying that blue marijuana. <laughs> nice. uh, two, Stella, make sure you mark down that you picked up a Digmon arm in your inventory. Yeah. So there's an add item button, button at the bottom of the screen. And that just gives you a text box. And you can just write in, you've oh. got a Digmon arm. And it gives you a digging speed of three uh, units per, rep, per action, I guess, per movement action. Gotcha. And uh, Stella, for that exceptional punch on the Digmon as well, take a point of inspiration too. <laughs> nice. All right. So back to the maps. Uh, I'm going to move you guys back from the battle map to the regular map. Ooh. Cool. I put everyone in a general position for what they're doing. Uh, you guys rolled heal checks at the end of the last battle, but I forgot that I'd changed the ruling on that, where heal checks are part of taking a rest, a short rest. So we're going to say that for the purpose of this, you guys are going to be just taking a short rest after the battle, setting up here and unwinding a bit mm. it's okay. if i remember right yep. no one successfully made any rolls that's uh i think nyaramon took a point of hell oh I maybe forget. no no actually only you and hannah made rolls and and we both got nothing did not we kind of flanked him <laughs> however as part of resting uh digimon below their basic stage are going to just return to that and even though Chioko does not have her Digivice, Nyaramon still naturally digivolves back to Salamon. So let's put okay. Clive back in here. Okay, so it's conversation time. A smallish, about four, nine at a guess. As uh, Digimon in a white robe has wandered up from an upper section. There are some stairs leading up to here. There is some tables and such that you can see around back here. This Digimon has just come up, placed this staff they carry down, and is leaning on it and is looking over you guys. The uh, last thing they did was basically agree with Eleanor to dismiss Blue Merrimon, who went over to sulk in the corner over here. And... This Digimon is now introduce himself. So it's like, well, I try not to get involved when there's conflict here, but you seem to be quite special. So I'll introduce myself. I'm Sorcerymon. I'm something of a researcher who is set up here to investigate some phenomena in the area. I'd like to know about you, and I can answer any questions you might have for me. Uh, since Maddie's not here, if anyone wants to like take charge of Eleanor asking questions, you can ask questions through her, and I'll tell Eleanor this, since some of you might not be conversationalists, and some of you still have no idea what's going on down here. <laughs> hey, Stella and Derek, uh, it seems like things have quietened down a little. Are you just going to head through into this room? Mm. <laughs> Come on, Stella. Oh, so yeah, I think she Stella needs a minute to calm down. Yeah, it's got the adrenaline down. going. <laughs> Just beating Choka's, the shit out of a digma. Choka's gonna like approach a little bit towards uh, Sorcery Mon. Like, um, I I have a question. Yes. I was wondering, had have you seen a group of Digimon pass through here at all? We're yes, we're trying to meet up yes, with them again. I, 
I believe I can piece together why you're here and why they were here. They attempted to seek refuge. Lou Merrimon, as you might have said, chased them off because he does not allow non-personnel to get involved here. And I gave them a direction into the caves where they could set up where Blue Merrimon wouldn't notice them. You hear a what from the distance, and Eleanor just turns and gives Blue Merrimon a look, and Blue Merrimon turns around again. I'm, I'm so relieved to hear that. Thank you. Um, would you mind we're trying to meet up with them again? I can send you in another direction. Sorcery Mon waves his staff over his hand, like, starts conjuring up some snow and ice, and it takes the shape of a little white bird of snow. Hmm. Oh! Shepard's just like, aww. It's cute. Sorcery Mon lifts the hand, and the bird goes and perches on Shepard's shoulder. Oh, hi, little guy. Clive, look. Right. Clive wants to climb climb back into uh, Chioko's jacket. Yeah, keep him safe and warm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Derek, what's up? Uh, I'm trying to decide if Derek would want to go back out there yet. Uh, I guess he, I guess he, I guess you know, Galmon's out there, so yeah. It's gonna. You're gonna keep your distance. Or you're gonna see if Galmon's like punching gonna, something he shouldn't be. Gonna inch past, trying like those Digmon are all off, right? They have not moved once. They're still like hunkered still down. Still inching past. <laughs> yep. Stick into the wall. That's fair. Okay, and from here he can see Galmon from here, right? Uh, it's kind of an awkward angle, but you can hear voices of the others talking up this way, so you get a general idea that maybe things aren't bad, because they're not, like, yelling or angry or anything. Yeah, oh, okay. Gaumon's yelling, but Gaumon's like, Derek! Come out now! <laughs> Fair enough. Derek's I think back if, here. If, <laughs> I think if Derek's left, then Stella's also going to pick up Bergamon and... Head on over as well. Radio. So as you guys follow over, you find the same situation the others have. There's a couple of steps leading up to a higher cabin here. Sorcery Mon's standing at the top of the steps, leading, leaning on a staff and just chatting with Eleanor and Chioko and the others. It's about this time that you also hear a uh, grinding noise and some earth over here gives way and the earth falls in a bit and a orange white furred canine head pops itself up out of that and just peeks into the room and like surveys this situation. You all standing there, looks at Sorcery Mon, Sorcery Mon just casually waves, turns waves a hand to direct the Digimon's attention over to Blue Merrimon, and then Doralumon digs itself up out of the ground and just starts pacing around over here, keeping an eye at a distance. Hmm. You don't need to mind them. They're something of a guardian, and the situation has de-escalated. Oh, that's good to know. So you're looking for the ones who went further in. Are you after anything else in these mines? Uh, Zen kind of perks up data, I guess, but other than that. Ah, fellow researcher, how wonderful. Have you discovered anything so far in your time here in the solid state glacier? It's cold. <laughs> True enough, but... You can imagine, I quite like the cold. It's it's actually been wonderful seeing all the different places in the mountains, and we came from a lake before this. I guess just like excited about the snow. <laughs> so Shuron takes a moment looking you over and it seems to be considering and says, well, while you're here, you seem 
more powerful than most others I have met in the glacier. I might... There's a concern I have, given the current... And as they're talking, you just pick up that there's, like, still a bit of a shake to the area. Like, during the battle and combat, it was active enough that you didn't quite notice, but even now there's still a bit of a general just shaking movement that comes and goes, and sometimes little pebbles drop down from the ceiling overhead. Sorcerer just waves a hand. Okay, so the disturbance currently taking place, I worry that it might disturb something else that I think is here. I haven't proven it, but I believe there is something buried deeper beneath the earth, and it it's hard to say. Tell me, have you any, have you heard anything about chaos as a presence here? Anything marked with that description? Chaos? Um... Hmm. Uh, Tor, what was there? Is it, um, is chaos like a like the digital biohazard kind of? Uh, the, there's oh. a specific word for the digital biohazard. It's not chaos specific, uh, okay. as far as Sorcery Mon says it. But Zen, you specifically remember that um, the Armor OS that installed itself when you scanned the Digmon to your laptop. Uh, installed under a program called Chaos Guard. Okay. Um, I might have come across something like that. There's old data here and there that refers to... <sighs> it's a difficult word to put into focus. I suppose the best... Have you ever heard in all your travels of something called a concept? Have we? Uh, Zen might not have. Who's been with the uh, surveying, surveillance corp the longest? Um, I know Chioko, this isn't, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure this is Chioko's first mission. I think but we're I think, all like relatively new, aren't we? I think so. I think in general, only a few of us have actually. I think Zen's actually the one with the most experience out of us, but maybe not. Yeah, Zen's also got a bit of a situation with regard to information that yeah. she's allowed to know. Uh, we talked about this before once, uh, Zen, about whether you were you managed to get any info get your hands on information you shouldn't specifically know. Um, I think she has been trying to do that this whole quite frequently while working with the surveyors. So Okay, well, why don't you give me a knowledge awesome. check and we'll see what you know. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 knowledge. In knowledge. Power. Oop, sorry. Wrong window. Sorry, just remembering the commands. Yep. I did it wrong. Hold on. <laughs> One day I'll just remember it. Remember that'll be a really commands. good day. Just kidding. No, I'm not. All right. Uh, you think you remember once, like you looked and scanned a bunch of old reports of other surveillance court members and journeys they've taken, and you mm. think you saw the word once in a report, but the further information on it was. Uh, behind a higher level of lock that you didn't get through at the time. So you think there's like, maybe it's come up once before for the Surveillance Corp, but you don't have any information on what it is. But Zen knows that the Surveillance Corp might know something about it. Yes. Or at least has it on record. Okay. Mm, don't know much about it. Sounds familiar. Hmm. Well, it's... Something of a digital life form, but not a Digimon itself. It's something that perpetuates its name. And I believe there is a concept named Chaos that is buried beneath the glacier. 
Ooh, that sounds a little dangerous. It's the information that I've gathered would suggest it is well sealed. However, the room shakes again as Sushman <gasps> waves a hand again. The, the thing, I the big thing that's coming that, here. <laughs> yes, I worry that if the ancient active at the moment digs too deeply, it may upset the seal and the situation could. So Sean waves a hand again and like this delicate snowflake spirals over their hand before they clench their hand around it and it shatters. You just open their hand and little pieces of ice drop out of it. You understand my concern. Yeah. That's extremely fair. Um, hasn't this ancient Digimon been doing this for a while, though? Why hasn't it woken up before? Well, how long ago do you think was the last time it did this overturning? Hmm. I feel like we've been told that, but I don't remember. Yeah, um... The, it's this... an ancient legend, but no one has actually, like, observed it happen before. Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel like we asked this and didn't get a solid answer. Digimon aren't good with time frames. Didn't get right. a solid state answer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very good. I liked it. I liked and subscribed to it. Hmm. The point Sorcerymon is making is that the ancient that goes through here is a legend of the solar state glacier that is passed down amongst the communities here so it's an active story that's recurred whereas this sealed concept is more like forbidden knowledge that sorcery mon is something of a researcher has come across hmm. i'm assuming anything that's named chaos is probably not great for um, things it's... continuing as they are that is Definitely how I would describe it. You could say that it's it's something fitting with what the Ancient does, because the Ancient's design is to redesign the area it passes through, and I would be unsurprised if the concept doesn't also redesign what it does. Maybe they have different designs in mind, but well, we'll find out if... The seal is broken, however, I say that, but I have to wonder if the seal is broken where the will's still here. What, uh, what's, what sealed this thing to begin with? The concepts, as our stories record, were active in an ancient war that took place across the digital world, and in the wake of that battle, they defeated were sealed away to prevent their effects from perpetuating. Hmm. The number or names are not actively recorded. I am aware of them as a existence, but I don't know of any besides this one. It's history I chased to this place to dig into it. <laughs> dig into it. Well, it's funny because we're at a mining facility. <laughs> I'm a humorist. <laughs> it's it's good to have a sense of humor at a time like this. Well, here is my consideration at present. I have been here providing my aid to this mining operation in exchange for access to the mines so they dig deeper. I believe I've seen the path to the seal. However, it is more than I can safely traverse, and so I've not been able to dig any deeper. Given the current situation, I am prepared to leave because there's not much more I can do. However, given your strengths, it might be possible that all of you could traverse to the seal itself and make the judgment on whether it is safe or you could directly approach the ancient and convince them to stop though that is i would be impressed if such a thing were possible 
Uh, what do you plan on doing with this seal once you find it? Just strengthening it? It could be possible to reinforce it. I do not know much at all about it. I might be able to do something, or I might be able to do nothing. It's a risk, but everything in life is a risk. Sometimes we have to know when to take that risk. Um, can... Oh, my, my decipher intent is so low. <laughs> can, uh, can oh, I... decipher intent. Let me sure. take I think a look Eleanor at... would roll that. Eleanor's got a plus nine to her decipher intent. I think that, what... what is that? Willpower? It's intelligence. Oh, okay. I got a six. Oh, no, wait. I think it is... No, no it, it is, is willpower. willpower. Okay, I've got an eight. So we could both give it a go. Yeah, I All think right. what... Just like to make it... What what's going on in Zen's mind? I think maybe Zen pulls you both over and is like, I have known a lot of let's call them um people who like to hack into secure locations in my time. Um not all of them are interested in this kind of thing for the sake of preservation. Um what do you what do you make of this guy? Um Joke is gonna think and roll decipher intent. All right, here's the decipher intent for Eleanor. Twenty-one. Yeah, Eleanor's got that. <laughs> All right. Two ones. Eleanor... Ouch. <laughs> Eleanor chimes in. I can't do the voice. I'm sorry, Maddie. Eleanor you chimes do in. The voice. You I gotta try. You gotta oh. try. Well. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. The thing is, it doesn't seem very concerned about it. Um, it says it's bad, but it doesn't seem worried. Yeah, that's kind of what I... I was picked up that Sorcery Mon has been speaking more in a sense of curiosity and interest than actually being concerned about the situation at present, which is a trait that Zen is very familiar with. <laughs> Very like yes. academic about this. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um. I think you guys could take. I. I don't know if Zen would distrust that. It's because that's probably where she comes from a lot too. But she's not like really trusting of um. People who, like uh people in that kind of position that don't have a vested interest, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So Zen is um, wary, but is willing to do whatever the group wants to do. I feel like checking on this seal might be a good idea regardless, because if it breaks, we might be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, that, that's more than fair. And if nothing else, it's something we can report back to on. Yeah, we can let the others know about it. This would be good information to record for the surveillance corp. Like, hey, we found a super monster buried beneath the ice here. Yeah. Careful about that one. <laughs> In case anyone happens to come by, by this way again. Mm -hmm, for sure. It's, it's our job to report things like this after all. Yeah, I guess that's true. All right. Um, I'm down. Let's check out the seal. Oh, but maybe we should find uh, those dudes first, right? Get the Digivice back, yeah. Oh, yes, that would be great. <laughs> um, I do have a request before we go and check out the seal thing for you. If you could show us where the villagers are. Um, I left something very important with them. I need to get it back before we um, proceed any deeper. Of course, I can give you guidance for that. Thank you. Shoka was so worried about this door that she completely forgot that she that Clive can't do all. <laughs> Mother, please. <laughs> I all am right. so small. So Sorcery Mon starts heading back this way. The, uh, white snowbird that was on your shoulder, Chioko, flutters up to Sorcery Mon now, since it was going to be a guide for you beforehand, but Sorcery Mon is now 
joined the party. Da -na 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 -na. Yay. All right. So a sorcery one heads through this room. They stop for a moment and then raise a hand and start making some uh, symbols in front of the Digmon. And you see the middle one, like, stand up and unfurl from its armor and shift and raise its arms. Sorcery one are like, okay, one's enough for now. And the Digmon falls in line following behind them. You guys can question that if you want, or you can just follow behind Sorcery Mon. We need to uh, dig to get there? Uh, I did place a extra blockage in the way just to prevent it being the pathway being stumbled into. It also simply helps to have a guard on hand. I am not the most durable, and these ones are. Did you block the villagers in? <laughs> no. I gave them a direction and sent them on their way. Hmm. All right. Jericho's going to follow. Oops, that's going right. on. Everyone falls in line as Sorcery One leads the way around and starts heading back down the tunnel you guys went through. So he did lock them in. And comes to this fork here and starts oh. walking down the path you guys didn't take. Oh, we took the wrong path. We took the wrong path. The wrong turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> All right. As Sorcery Mon goes ahead, the Digmon just stops and stands here. Uh, Sorcery Mon just walks down this way. And as you guys go further along, you hear quiet voices in the area. And you come in to find all the village Digimon have been gathered. God, if we only had done any oh, level of here. scouting at all. No, all right. no, that's yeah. not how. What do you think we are? Surveyors of some kind? <laughs> it's fine. We surveyed both paths. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And Sorcery Mon walks through. Uh, they come to a stop, and Jijimon looks up and then sees you guys coming in. It's like, oh, you made it back, and you've made it here. Yeah, thanks for the directions. I left the best note we, we could in a hurry. This on our own. <laughs> I do like no. it. It's literally like 10 feet. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> it is right here. Oh my, we missed if them we by 15 If we listened closely feet. enough, we probably would have heard them like talking to each other. If we had made uh, any kind of check to decide which path we should go down rather than just like... Oh, the I water guess. flowing through here had enough background noise that a passive perception wouldn't have helped you. So yeah, you would have needed to actively scout it. <laughs> you guys decided, let's follow the water. And so, you know, oh, well. sometimes these things happen. Yeah. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. We definitely lost this one, but that is okay. We made some new friends, you know? What is what is life about if not making new friends? We made new friends you. and got a cool drill. Um, yeah. Um, Eleanor notes Gigimon is still leaning on the spare cane she gave him. It's like, oh, how's that working out for you? <laughs> Gigimon oh, and we, Eleanor we brought have a discussion back, about right? the benefits of stuff. Uh, it's pretty cracked. And yeah, I have the staff. It looks more like yeah, a Master it's... Roshi staff than his staff, though. It's got all grimble grambled up. Yeah, the staff that you guys took is a little warped, a little cracked, and Gigimon like considers it and then considers the cane Eleanor game. It's like, oh, stick with this one, thanks. No problem. But um we're back and we're not infected anymore. I can see that. Gigimon like reaches in her his clothing and pulls out Chioko's Digivice and holds it out to her. She'll she'll wander over and take it from him it. after giving him a little bow. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, such a to have this again. The mines weren't quite as safe as I had hoped, but Sorcery Mon gave us a location to set up, and a, some just another quake goes through the area. We can hope it's the best we have. I was hoping it went a bit deeper and safer, but uh, sometimes you make do. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Um, and honestly, it might not 
might not be much safer down below. Uh, let's. I think uh, Zen kind of like cuts in and it's like Soul Stream on puts. You, you can see Soul Stream on giving a side glance as Zen steps up, puts um her hand on Chioga's mouth like, no, it's fine. This is probably very safe right here. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me give Chijimon a decipher and intent. <laughs> oh no, I'm so sorry. Chijimon, what are your stats, buddy? NPCs, Chijimon. Whoop, whoop. Uh, oh lord, I have to open you in the old thing because I didn't port you to a new character. Uh, Chijimon has all of the forgotten tech. <laughs> well, I think Gigimon has uh, at least one brain stat that he, that's benefiting them. At least one brain uh, cell on this Gigimon. Yeah, improved derived stat brains, so they can make a half brains check. Uh, their prodigious skills and knowledge and persuade, but not insight. But uh, half of Gigimon's brains are still 10, so... <laughs> Shijimon gives you a long look as you were trying to de-escalate. It's like, aha. Uh -huh. All right, well, you go ahead then. You can see Shijimon has lost confidence in where they are right now. Shijimon, I'm so sorry, Shijimon. <laughs> just such a terrible liar. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I should have made you guys, instead of my me doing a insight, I should have made you do manipulate. Hang on. Technically, okay. you can do both for contested, right? Uh, Zen, go ahead and make a manipulate. Well, uh -oh. your manipulate is plus three. This isn't going anywhere you want it to go. What's, um, is manipulate a charisma? Yeah. Oh, well, that's true. You could activate your minor aspect on that. Oh, wait. Uh, I could. I haven't gotten a chance to do that yet. I'm going to do that. You could um, use Disguised. All right. Oh, we would I be able to help at all with that? Uh, yes, actually. There's mechanics for helping. Who? Mechanics for helping. Uh, skill check. Help check. Uh, human characters may work together to perform a skill check. Only one character may roll help to assist out the skill check. Uh, the roll for a help check is 3d6 plus the attribute, so you'd be 3d6 plus charisma. And if you get okay. above a 14, it's a plus 2. And if you get below a 9, it's a minus 2. Okay. Uh, so, Chiyoko, 3d6 plus charisma. That's a 19, baby. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's a plus two to Zen. So right. Zen, you are now rolling a manipulate at plus seven. Wahoo! Oh, god damn it! Hold on. Bing, bing, the wahoo! Is the minor aspect? Oh, uh, that's probably about as good as it was gonna get. I mean, it was a well, that was a plus ten, not a plus seven. What? Oh shoot! Sorry, I just did a copy plate, copy paste. Why can't I get this right? If you could see all of the unrecognized commands I'm getting on mine. Wow. These 19, so just keep on coming. That's just keep coming. Well, they don't Gigimon is slightly cautious, but not like outright believing you guys are misleading or anything. We're not trying to mislead, we're just trying to not tell them everything. Well, Chijimon has a sense that you're not telling everything, but Chijimon doesn't have a great idea of what you're not telling. Right. We're not trying to mislead, we're just trying to lie. Yeah, <laughs> those are very different. Are you intentionally trying to mislead? No, I'm just <laughs> lying. <laughs> I, I make that argument all the fucking time in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not a um what is it it's not called um deception dece it's not a deception role if i also believe it <laughs> <laughs> that is just persuasion i don't think zen also believes things are fine yeah that's true to be fair though <laughs> does, zen, does zen ever believe things are fine no <laughs> uh 
Do you guys want to stick around anymore, or do you guys want to head off again now? I think maybe, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but maybe we, like, stick around, just take a vibe check how everybody's doing. Um, yeah. Messed up a little bit. Sure, take team huddle. Home. Team huddle. Team huddle, yeah, that sounds good. Put the five of you guys in a circle. <laughs> Shaka yeah. just looks extremely chat. Like, she's just like, oh, no. I've crushed this man's dreams. This old man. <laughs> We go. Right. Well, Gigimon has just moved back and is discussing with some of the others. These guys are more of the uh, caretakers of the lot. So. Gigimon is also here. <laughs> Team Huddle. Team Huddle. Where did I put Derek? Yeah, Derek's fine. I'll move Derek Sorcery Mon out of the way so you guys can move one down and fit more people in the Team Huddle. Perfect. Derek, Stella, come on, get in on this. Get in on this huddle. This cuddle huddle. Okay. Uh, Back corner. <laughs> okay. So I just want to confirm. Clive this. sticks his head out of, Shio- uh, out of Shioko's jacket so that he's right in the middle of the team huddle. Perfect. Yes, good. I just want to confirm one thing. Oh. Yes. We don't really have a place to carry random stuff, right? So, like, Stella's just carrying that arm around, right? Yeah, she's... Yeah. <laughs> she's probably kind of, like... Like, since we're in, like, glaciers, she's probably got, like, a big, fluffy, like, winter coat on. She's just kind of, like, stuffing it under there so that... Like... She doesn't, she doesn't like, have it out in the open. Understandable. Considering, like, there's still Digmon hanging around. <laughs> God, that's grim. No, this is something else's arm. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so she's just I'll like that slug over you. <laughs> so she's just like um, just very quiet and <coughs> and just like sweating profusely. It's big enough that like it takes up your entire forearm and goes up about halfway through your upper arm if you just put your hand inside of it, you found a point in it that you can, like, grip onto. So, like, you can hold it over your arm. It's kind of like arm armor that you can wear. And um. you found, like, somewhere inside of it when you can press a button and the drill spin, which is how you figure out. You can do a little bit of digging. It. So, you know, you can equip it whenever you want. Or you can keep that yeah. side out of mind. Well, I mean, she's not going to equip it now. Is yeah. The thing. <laughs> Team huddle. <laughs> Bergamon makes snacks. <laughs> Excellent. Um, you, you actually, probably see of... Stella just like very nervous about trying to smuggle this like dig one arm. <laughs> hey, buddy, do you need a burger? <laughs> <laughs> God. So why are we huddling up? I for, forgot oh, about the like, arm. For flavor. Uh, yeah. Just... One thing I want to go over. That, that, that was are, Derek like, in character. <laughs> oh. You guys are uh, <laughs> taking a short rest over this. Like you're moving around a bit, but you're resting as well. And since Bogomon's always here and always willing to provide help. Uh, Bergamon's healing hands quality applies here. Ooh. Always Bergamon. So, uh, Derek and Shioko, can I get you both to make a uh, pool check of three? So, 3d6 greater than five. 3d6 greater than five. Is it slash R or slash roll? Both. R. Okay. 3d6. And greater is. Uh, arrow pointing mouth. to the right. Okay. Wow! Uh, wow! <laughs> you get worse. Uh, you get I a bad one. Do I lose health? Hang on. Do I, I lose health? I, do I lose I'm health? Not, I'm pretty sure it's only skill checks where my triple ones come back to bite you, but let me double check. <laughs> this is like skill Snake Eyes plus one. <laughs> Food poisoning. You ask the player for rolls three ones on their dice. The GM is free to make as hard a move against the player as they wish. You ask for uh, a veggie burger. 
skill check. Not really, because it's not based on a skill. Bergamon accidentally gives you a shrimp burger, and you don't like it at all. And... Oh, no, it's a body check. Or... Let me think about this. <laughs> oh, God. Yoko gets food poisoning. <laughs> I'm in danger! <laughs> Uh, no, this is a pool check, not a skill check. Those are different things. This, is like, this would be like rolling three ones on an accuracy roll. Okay. So you I don't penalize those ones. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Derek, you heal one wound box. Yeah. <laughs> so now you and Shioko are both one down. Okay. I'm not one point. down, I have one left. Oh, really? Yeah. No, you're a... Um, Two or three wound boxes. No, I, I've I've been at one for a while because that's why I was so scared because I only had one HP left. <laughs> huh. Why have I got you at two or three? Oh, if you say so. Yeah, it's it's on my sheet. I've been Fair keeping enough. track. Okay. Uh, anyway, team huddle. Go. <laughs> Eleanor just says, "It's so wonderful that we're all so close together." <laughs> Yeah. Chick is like, okay. So, our, our our plan from here is where we're gonna go down deeper into the mines now that we're properly all well equipped again, and we're gonna go check out this door, seal sealed door. Yes. Right. That's the the, the plan of action. Yep. And then uh, when we get there, we'll. Figure stuff. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully it, it'll be um secure, and if not, maybe we can make it more secure. You've got some cool um clickety clack keyboardy skills. We could probably do something with that. Mm-hmm. The old clickety clack. That is what they hired me for. Yes. Hired. <laughs> Joker just doesn't know anything about computers, so she's just like, mm-hmm. The, the clickety clack. <laughs> That's the stand that computers make. Yeah. Oh, she's wonderful. <laughs> I, li I literally have a minor torment about not being able to use technology. <laughs> um, any anyone else got any other things we want to, to interject with for the for the plan? No, I think I think we're just doing more surveying. Yep, that's what we're here for. Okay, everyone, put your hands in the middle. Why? To do a cheer. Eleanor immediately puts her hand out. <laughs> Joker puts her hand on top. She loves this. How long has it been? And since she like she like has grabs Pokemon's little. Like, yeah, yeah. Push that in the into it. Enamon thinks it's a treat, so he just envelops a hand. Just oh, oh. <laughs> Enamon is joining in. Yep. Uh, oh, come Gap on, everyone else. Gamon's gonna put one of his little boxing glove hands in. Fine. Sun puts a hand in. All right. Three, two. One, let's go, surveyors! Cave in. Everyone dies. Up. Let's go, surveyors! Uh, let's go, around, surveyors! One of these little <gasps> Digimon is just looking up at you with the widest eyes. Oh, oh my god, it's so <laughs> Don't mind in the background, I changed the colors to reflect their families instead of random things. So, red ones just means they're dragons roar. Aww. It means they love being on fire all the time. <laughs> Cute. All right. So you guys have charged up. You morally charged up and ready to go. Yes. Morale is up. Uh, yes. And Sorshimon with Digmon is just patiently waiting for you guys to follow behind as they lead up along this way. All right. Let's. Move on out. I love him right. waiting patiently out there. We're just all eating burgers and shit. Just like. 
Well, probably actually, off on something, but uh, Zen. Mm-hmm. Give me a perception check. Perception disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, perception would is it perception willpower or intelligence? It's willpower. Womp. Okay. Plus well, six is still pretty decent. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Zen's got so many eyes. Just got to not roll okay. once. Well, I would say yeah. Zen. Sometimes you can't tell that she's watching you behind the mask. Uh, while you guys are having your team meeting and also eating burgers and such, part of your extended rest, you've been keeping an eye out on Sorcery Mon, yeah. and you notice Sorcery Mon uh, just doing some more work with the Digmon, like creating more of these magic lifts and seeming to be... It gives you the impression of a programmer at work, and you actually just... It comes to you just pop open your computer and take a check on it while this is going on. Mm. The Chaos Guard program is still up. The bottom, the top right screen, there were four screens under the Chaos Guard, and the radar was top left, uh, the Digmon schematic was bottom left, the Digivice log was bottom right. The top right was just random miscellaneous characters coming out, but now mm. it's actually changed to be specifically printing out um, code that's being written, and you can see a user ID in there showing a connection to a Digmon, and the ID name is Sorcerymon. Okay. So you're actually like, you take a moment to look back and forth, you think about it, and you get the feeling that you're basically watching over Sorcerymon's shoulder. Whatever this system is, it's letting you watch what sorcery is doing to this Digmon. Does he see, does Sorcerymon seem to know that I'm watching? Sorcerymon like, doesn't it... react as you're watching over this, no. Okay. Sorcerer busy just doing this magic coding to Digmon is not paying attention to what you guys are up to. Okay. Um, Zen is very, like, worried, maybe. Just the like, general I'm... impression you get from watching this code is that Sorcerer Mon has, like, is controlling the Digmon. It's written, like, you will do this, you will follow me, you will protect me. You watch, like, general protection. You are able to observe that there's protection commands in here, like, if something tries to harm Sorcerymon, Digmon will attack. But you also note that, Dig that Sorcerymon's trying to like dig for information. There's a lot of trying to access black boxes of information within Digmon that aren't working out properly. Sorcerymon's trying multiple attempts to basically extract information that's buried in Digmon that they can't seem to get out. Huh. Yeah, that definitely worked. Well, um... It is like you you get the you get the feeling like you also basically did this. You yeah. tried to connect to a Digmon. Sorcery yeah. Mon is a very familiar personality you're getting the feeling of. Yeah, Zen is like I feel like Zen doesn't trust um that kind of personality just because that is her personality. Yeah. I guess. And so. she knows that if she didn't have like someone overseeing her, like right now she would be doing behaving very differently so she is very wary right now but i don't think she has the uh, the communication skills to sort of like communicate that to the rest of the team so she just turns to them as like as we're all kind of huddled around she's like hey um just keep an eye on sorcery mon uh, okay i could do that just uh yeah anyone who'd be friends with that blue marathon uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good point. Hmm. All right. At this point, you guys, your short rest has come to an end, and you're ready to follow Sorcery Mon further in? Yeah. Yep. All right. Sorcery Mon leads you back down to this fork where you went upwards before and follows the water pathway a bit but then veers away from it and keeps going. As they're leading the way along here, you note that there's some slick ice along the ground and walls that... I mean, it's a solid state glacier, but underground it's been mostly dirt and such, so the fact that there's a lot of ice here and it seems to be mounting as Sorcerer just leads you up further stands out. Until you come to a closed-in room 
with a number of purple and blue crystals that are bursting out of the ground all over it. Ooh. Tess is now realizing why I used the um, Hollow Knight mine theme. Oh, it's I just... cannot hear your yeah. music. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, last time. Last time oh, you guys last. were going through the mine. Yeah, it's got a, that makes the sense. purple crystals have a very uh, crystal aesthetic. Yes, I love that level. All right, uh, if you guys just want to all move yourselves along the way, I'll yep. bring L and Five up. And group up because we're going to be changing maps in a second. Yeah, I'm trying to find me. There we go. All right, Sorcerer One walks in here and has Digmon move forward, and Sorcerer One does some more magic coding like this. Blue light pulses around Digmon and then stretches up as a pillar around the ground. And you see some of the crystals react and shrink and pull into the wall and such. And there's a lot of movement through the earth as this ring of earth rises up a little in the center of the room, which you guys are all standing on, and then begins lowering down again. As it lowers down, it, you're it's like an elevator going downwards. You're surrounded on all sides by the earth until it gets low enough that there's not earth on. It's an open room. It's a very blue and crystalline room. It's extraordinarily cold, colder than on the upper levels as well. As Social Moon is bringing you guys down, you really feel this as you are heading down, you look out and you can see these bridges of ice and platforms and they are slowly turning in all directions around. Like sometimes they're spinning, sometimes they're just rotating. There's a constant movement of all these ice platforms. As Social One lowers you down, they explain that these platforms need to be connected and maintained to form a path that unlocks a gateway at the very bottom of this cap. However, the environment is, and as you guys are lowering down, you watch out and you can see that for one moment, all of the passages stop in place. Like they make a perfect path that you see, and then they start spinning very quickly. And this huge gust of wind blows up from far below, and it's just constantly blowing up now from the ground floor to the ceiling. Because of the platform you're on, you're protected from it, but you can almost see the wind rushing up and slamming against the ceiling overhead. Social Manager says, I cannot navigate through this and control the directions, but I believe you have the ability to. So let me move you over to the next map. Oh as you guys are coming downwards. The Mega Man disappearing block room. <laughs> And let me zoom out. I'm just going to turn the fog of war off for this entire map. Oop. Ooh. And so all of these sections are basically disconnected from one another and turning strangely. Uh, Sorcery One points out from this platform of Earth, which they have lowered down for you guys, and points at a golden orb that you can see sometimes through one of this platform that's basically it's a platform with a hole in the middle of it this one down here and it's basically spinning in place very quickly but there is a golden orb in the center of it so she wants says if you are able to manipulate these they control the ordering of the spinning there's more spread throughout here and as far as i understand piece by piece, you can stabilize this area. However, social one sticks their hand out for a moment at the wind, and you can actually see their arm like being forcibly blown up, and they pull their hand back. It looked like their arm was almost wrenched by the intensity of the wind there. This isn't something I can control. Welcome to the ice dungeon. Let's get started. All right. Do we have ice physics? Are we going to take one step and slide off? <laughs> it's a good question. Well, why don't you guys, you're just still standing. This platform here is basically the Earth platform that Sorcery Mon has lowered on you guys. <laughs> and while you were on here, you're safe from the wind. 
you were safe from the ice. You were as well off here as you can be. The rest of this, it's kind of crazy out here. All right, um, boy. On the wrong step, we fall into the abyss, I feel like. Hmm. Well, with the intensity of the wind that's blowing up, it's more like one wrong step and maybe you're going to be slammed into the ceiling overhead. Yeah. It's not better, but... It is kind of the opposite of the abyss, though, I guess. Yeah, okay. You'll be violently thrown away from the abyss. Okay, um... Just thinking. You can actually, like, see that Sorcery Mon is maintaining this block of earth, and, like, you get the feeling that there's an amount of power needed to keep the safety spot. Which is why Sorcery Mon can't offer much more than this. Okay, that's fine. Okay. It's good to have a safe platform to be able to stand on. Important, and we need that. Um... Eleanor whispers to Bakuman, I'm not sure about this. It seems very dangerous. Jamon's yeah, just kind of looking at his paws like, I got claws, maybe I can dig him into the ice a bit. That's a good point. I don't it? know if it'll work very well, but... Ooh. All right. <laughs> so you're suggesting what someone wants to do. Gawans can I like try and take like a single little step on the ice, just like with his like trying to dig his claws into it and see how that works. All right. Do you have anything that benefits you for this? Um, let me take a look. Probably not. But that doesn't look like it. No. All right. So make a CPU check for Gawan. Three D six plus one. Three D six plus one. Cause I'm just a little guy. Uh, Gammon steps out onto the ice. The wind is blowing up from between here, so the ice isn't actively going around. But Gammon, it's like, as soon as you like try to make a purchase, the ice has nothing you can dig into. Like, it does not scratch at all. And like, you take a little step and you can already feel your balance on that foot going out. You kept one foot on the dirt, one on the ice. And so you basically just slip and fall backwards on your back on the dirt. Oh, that's bad. Bad idea. Bad idea. Ugh. It's real slippery. I, I can't even dig my claws into it a little bit. For testing purposes, Enumon's going to do the exact same thing. <laughs> In his defense, he is both chungier and also, like, does have the actual, like, his claws are actually made for digging. Yeah, that's true. I have no idea if that actually uh, helps. He just puts one paw on the ice, too. 3D6 plus uh, CPU. 3D6 plus body. Okay. Which direction are you stepping out? Just, like, pretty much right next to where Galmon just did it. Like, And how are you step stepping out? Because Galmon could just, like, put a foot out and keep his weight back on the dirt. Unimon's not exactly got the same build for that. Yeah, he's just so kind of, like... Putting both paws out? Yeah, both front paws out. out. See what happens. Okay. So, body check? I mean, uh, CPU check? Yep. 3d6 plus 1. The exact same check. Let's see how this one goes. He's got better digging claws. You see? do! Slightly six, six, better digging claws. <laughs> Alright, anyone puts both feet out and sets to dig in and feels like a little scratching of the ice, like maybe it can be marked, and then both Vinmon's feet slip out, and anyone kind of like drops down with the back legs standing but front legs lying down and head on the ice oh, and my boy. <laughs> just kind of like doesn't fully slide forward because the main of the weight is on the dirt but is can't get purchased to push back up kind of like front paws scrabbling on the ice someone please pull this dog back onto the dirt <laughs> yeah someone's gonna try to yeah, uh, Gaumon will help too oh, since right. Inamon's right there. Gaumon just puts paws on the side of Inamon and walks the dog back onto the ice. <laughs> walks onto the dirt. Yeah. 
We're gonna have to be real careful about this. I was half thinking, I want to be like, we need to dig harder this time. Just... <laughs> this is dog science. You just do it again and again until it works better. All right. Anyone else got an idea in mind? Uh, I have a question. Um, yep. Fieri de Mon, does he have, like, flight? Can we fly across? Uh, Bridget? Hmm? Fieri de Mon. Oh, sorry, I was on. Um, Fieri uh, de Mon can jump. Can't but he fly. doesn't have, like, full flight. Um... Nope. But he can jump? Unfortunately, every farm in Inuman will get bigger and bigger and just push everyone else out onto the ice. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, none of you took flight, huh? <laughs> Hold on, let me see. What's my movement? It's 10. Hmm. Potentially, if, um, kind of like, you math it out right, um, Fairy Jamon could jump over to that orb. Yeah, but it's, isn't that surrounded by spinning ice? He's surrounded by spinning fire. <laughs> no. Come on, guys, we just gotta get that Dragon Ball. For reference, by the way, this uh, big square of ice here is not quickly, but slowly just rotating in place. It's not like flipping over or anything, it's staying perfectly level, but it is turning as well. I'm just gonna draw some lines, which are just going to be um, where all the breaks are. This one is rotating over itself a bit. There's a lot of them, I just want to point out. Like, a lot of these things are only connected for a few moments at a time. And according to Soulstream On, somehow using those golden orbs can stabilize them out. Okay, another thing even one can't help with. But can anyone just hit the orb from far away? Some of us have ranged attacks. Yeah, the orange one does, at least. Just, fl just fling a burger at it. <laughs> that'll work. So that'll... Uh, Sorcery One chimes in as you're discussing. It's like, specifically, the orb's not damaging them, it's manipulating them. Uh, I could, uh, yeah, I was just thinking, it's like, I could try and make a running leap towards the <laughs> Come on, you couldn't take a step. You can't take a running leap without stepping. That's true. Ah. Even if I got big, I don't think I could make it. Hey Siri, how do I manipulate an orb? <laughs> I didn't get that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you say? What did Siri say? You didn't get that. Siri don't know about orbs. Orb. Oh, orb. <laughs> orb. The most defeated orb. <laughs> oh, that scared me real bad. <laughs> I forgot that that was a joke because that actually happens. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna put on my thinking brain now.
Okay, so I just want to confirm one thing. Yup. So it's the one that, like, on the map is directly south of us that is, like, spinning the most wildly, right? Um, most of these are spinning pretty wildly. Oh, this yeah. one's going real quick in, like, a, um... Uh, flipping over and over, which means this one inside of the hole is, like, got something rotating around it constantly and basically giving it protection. And also, like, this is spinning crazy quick as well. This one's um, rotating as well, but slower. It's like, you could do this uh, if you could balance on the ice. One of those, like, rotating log things. But uh, this one's going pretty crazy. Wait, I only see one, like, orb on my map. Yeah. Uh, the others yeah. are around, but you haven't spotted them yet because of the way everything's moving around. Uh... It's just that you're pointing to stuff that we can't see. <laughs> what, this one? You can see this orb. Right? The one directly below you? Yeah. Yeah, but you're pointing to other places. Well, he's just pointing at how those places are spinning. Yeah, th these, everything's spinning around. But um, the other orbs which are out there, I'll show you later. But right now, the significant problem is that this big block of ice path is spinning around pretty quickly and it's making it difficult to get at the orb in the middle of this hole here, even if you could get to it, which with the extreme slipperiness of the ice down here and the blasting winds over this chasm, a uh, pretty difficult situation. It's a crazy environment. You guys, you know, put your heads together, see what strengths you and your Digimon have and come up with a solution for me. So, um, very much, Jermon can definitely uh, leap over the spinning sections. Um, yeah, and I get think, at the orb, but I think I might be able to make some sort of like hmm. Not sure, actually. I know. Did I keep jump? No. Only Galmon can jump. I mean, the others can jump, just not as well. Yeah. Galmon's move. Actually, Galmon's movement is eight, so I can jump anywhere. So I could probably help leap over to things also. Yeah, but then you hit in the face with a big spinning chunk of ice. <laughs> well, unless we don't. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's always a chance so we get smacked in the day. That's true. I guess there is always the hypothetical possibility that you will just perfectly thread the needle. Mm -hmm. Gamon's pretty small. Touch the orb. Hopefully the orb stops the spinning so you don't get hit on the other side of the orb. Yeah. Cause I how still don't know exactly how to <laughs> manipulate it. You're right. Yeah, what if you jump over, touch the orb, and it stops, like, this one from spinning? Or something? It's just like, oh... <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Gamon just paps his big boxing paws, boxing glove paws on it. Like, please work. How do you manipulate an orb with the boxing gloves on? <laughs> can, can, can Gamon take the boxing gloves? I love gloves? tabletop sentences. Or are those, like, part of its body? Um, well... No, you got little hands under there. Okay, cool. Oh. I have flesh. Good to know. <laughs> I mean, like, the um, bandana is cloth. Yeah. So you could take the bandana off, you could take the boxing gloves off. Okay. Just making sure I was like, wait a second. Are those my hands? No. My gloves. Gamma's just like, if I can run from one, two, three. I can just barely make it. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, yeah, it's like... Well, for reference, Inuman is both slow and just does not get much faster by it, so I could be a windshield, maybe, depending on how well that works, but that's about it. It's not a bad idea. I'm just going through what my various other... <laughs> yeah, and... that, that, that was the overview for all forms of Inuman, by the way, was <laughs> just not get fast... And... Is a big wall. Um, Makagao Gamon has a charge attack that might be able to get him to move over there enough, but we don't want to break the orb. The borb. Uh, uh, you know what? 
so we can attacking it might not do anything but what if i if um oh but we could attack through the ice maybe we can attack through the ice fear Germon could you potentially give it a an effect which i don't know might do something could stella throw someone across <laughs> Well, it's Stella's throwing situation. Uh, oh my god, yeet. For a human, the distance you can throw someone is your body stat, but it's reduced by the target's body stat if they're the same size or larger. So if it's uh, someone small, you can throw them by your body stat of seven. Gamon is small. <laughs> but it is a couple of tiles. Uh, Shogo, five. Pops up and goes, up. Uh, when I'm digivolved, I'm very quick. I can. I'm, I, I'm good at dodging. <gasps> oh, you're right. And you can digi. That might be an idea, but you have to be. Pro- you have to promise me this will be very careful. I will be, Chioko. Okay. Let's do this then. She's gonna, like, hold the digivice over her head like it's a magical girl transformation device. Alright. It's just been gone so long, well, I forgot how to do it. going to digivolve all the way up to Nyanjamon, who has both agility and avoidance. Oh, my baby. Oh, Mac Gaukamon also has... agility. Not avoidance, but agility. Alright. So as Chilko digivolves, uh, Clive transforms into Nyanjamon. Nyanjamon is medium size, so personish size. The best friend. God, I love them. You gotta love it. Or else. Or else. Or else. <laughs> Five's like bouncing on his feet a little, pacing around a little bit, and just examining the ice and keeping an eye open and just warming up a bit. That's my son. My sonion. <laughs> um, you know what? I think, um, Bergamon's probably going to digivolve up to Fieri Dramon too. If nothing else, uh, he can lob some oigas at the ice to try and, uh, clear a better path. Okay. Uh, you guys are going to have to reposition yourself a little bit for Fairy Dramon to fit on this platform of Earth. Um, can Gaumon digivolve as well? Or will we not be <laughs> if able to... you all start digivolving now, you're going to begin pushing the limits of your free space. Uh, Fairy Dramon's bigger than uh, Galgamon, though, so I think. Uh, Fairy... No, Fairy Dramon's large as well, so. Yeah. Might Are you evolving Galmon to if... Galgamon or all the way up to Ultimate? I was thinking Mark Galgamon. The thing but is, they might if... not have enough space. <laughs> the thing is, even if like Digimon start like evolving, like getting big, like they can carry humans on top of them. That's is true. Necessary. That is true. And also yeah. it probably will help a little bit that Gal uh because like Galgamon's on four legs. But Maka Gagamon is on two. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it'll take you a bit to rearrange for all of this, but do you and Ferrodramon both want to digivolve? Yes, Gagamon wants to be big. He hasn't had a chance to be big it's yet. True. He's excited. All right. Well, last fight was the best chance, and Inumon just got in the way. <laughs> and then so also we haven't Fireball seen punched you. Gagamon's full digivolution yet. So, why don't you tell us about it, Hannah? All right. So. Galmon is just gonna start glowing, and you kind of see start to shift into the shape of Galgamon, going onto four legs and getting bigger. But then he keeps going; he gets bigger and bigger, and then you see him start to stand back up with the these this like rocket jet like thing sticking out of his back, and his boxing gloves have been replaced with these huge metal fists. Ooh. And he's. Let's out of hell. Alright. Oh you should have control of this token right away. Is that like a, a giant championship belt? Oh, yes, yeah, he's got it a is. big champ yeah. belt around him, over oh his shoulder God. like a bandolier. I like that the oh tail has just become part of the belt. Yeah. 
It's a also very looks big like he's belt. got like cool a uh, metal headband now. He's an Naruto right. now. <laughs> he is. Wait, is that a metal <gasps> headband or are those <gasps> are those sunglasses? I think they might be shades, actually. I think it's a visor. Oh, that's even cooler. Okay. Mark Gallagher, He's gonna like, flip the, the visor down. <laughs> so crack his big metal knuckles. Moves up as well to like be here at the ice and ready to do whatever. Uh, what are you guys thinking in this situation? Is anyone clambering up on a Mac Algamon or are you gonna let Clive and Mac Algamon make an attempt to do whatever? <laughs> anyone who wanna ride? No. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Derek's good out here. Clive, after a little bit of consideration, is going to shoot a Meowlestrial Narrow at the ice itself. It's an attack with Pierce, which means it ignores armor. So I want to see what Clive can do with this. With the pew pew. So that's 96. 96? That's huge. Every time. Every Whoa. time. What a roll. That's a lot. That's my boy joke. He's just cheering. Like, go! Oh! Alright. So as Clive shoots an arrow, uh, scores a pretty <laughs> decent hit on the ice. The arrow sticks into it, and this wave of digital patterns goes out from it because Clive's effect is applied with Miala's Steel and Arrow is pacified, which generally decreases accuracy and damage. But as the effect spreads out, you see the ice is spinning, slows a little bit. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. Mark Algamon's like, oh my god, look, look, you did it. You got it to slow down. Good job, little yeah. guy. I, I don't know how much more I can slow it down. Alright. Matt Gagamon just yeets Clive. <laughs> I'm just I'm just looking, I'm like Um hmm. I don't have anything that I can slow it down, but I do have a ranged attack and I do have a charge attack. I could just try and go. What's the worst that can happen, getting slammed into the ceiling? Yeah. Unless you're heavy enough to just fall now. Might be pretty heavy. Not sure. Um. What are we thinking? Oh, I'm thinking. It's really making me think. I'm trying to figure out if I want to try and, like, dash across the ice, like... Because it's slowed down, so Gagamon's like, using, like, hop, 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 like, just, like, going. But, I don't know if it's slow enough to really, like, parkour. Uh, this Torch block here, you can parkour over. This one here's going to be difficult to deal with. Okay. Like, Mac Algamon's confidence is the type like, eh, I could probably do that, but yeah. confidence, like even with that much confidence, there's still a probably. There's probably, a probably. probably. There's that probably. He's gonna try though, because this is finally maybe his ch a chance to shine, perhaps. He's, All right. he's excited. He's so you're gonna try and slide run over here to it, or are you just gonna try and straight jump over the gap? Um, my jump, my jump is five as Mac Algamon because I did not take jump going further. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five. I could clear that gap with a running start. I could clear that gap. The ice is very slippery. Yeah, that's the problem. Well, it's also like the speed boost. Yeah. Okay. Rich, speed boost. Would that live? That would that give me any extra jumping? You think? Or well, we'll see what happens. Really, <laughs> like the, the distance is enough that you can jump over to this if you get your angle right. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing that. We'll do that. We're gonna try and jump. Okay. Uh, 
Derek. <laughs> yeah. Do you, <laughs> as the partner of Mac Algamon, would you like to make a perception make... check to pick the best time for Mac Algamon to move? Uh, which check? Perception. Which one? Let's see, where's that one? Plus seven. <laughs> That's not terrible. That's the one willpower base roll I can kind of do. So 76. I will say, um, your minor aspect doesn't super specify this, but your minor aspect could also be described as understanding environments and like picking up on things quick. I'd let you like, because your minor aspect is kind of very niche. Yeah. I'd let you expand it to this if you want to. Okay. So it's more like like understanding terrain. Yeah, I'll do that. So instead of all right. So this is a uh, then nine d six greater nine. than five. Is uh, that... yep. Okay. Oh no, it's three d six plus nine. Three d six. Yeah, that's that's the thing I was wondering because I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember if this was a plus that. And mark off one use of your minor aspect. Shaboom. Bad roll, but pretty plus good. Nine. <laughs> okay, Smart so Gagamon, you're prepping up, you're getting ready, and Derek just keeps a watch out and then goes, Now! All right! <laughs> All right. Mac Galgamon, with the support from the party, make an agility check for me, which is RAM. So 3d6 plus RAM. 3d6 plus RAM. 6 plus 3. 15 pretty good. It's, a, it's an above average roll on each of the dice. Yep. Okay, so just one more time. Are you jumping over here or are you trying to navigate over this? Well? We're, we're jumping. Fruity is okay. a speed boost from the ice. Smack time on. Take a step forward. The ice, you immediately feel it slip, but you take another step as well and angle yourself forward and you begin sliding. You're sliding, you're sliding as you're stepping. You reach the edge of this, you put your foot down hard on the edge and you leap. And you come over as this thing is spinning around. It is spinning towards you, basically. So this point here goes down from this angle. You catch your foot on the edge of the ice as it's just even with you and you begin running up along it as this is turning down. It's not so fast you're already sliding, but you can already feel yourself back footing. You leap up again, and at this point, your hands clamp onto the edge of this, the edge here, as this is basically vertically up. You pull yourself up, tuck your legs in, you reach up, you put a hand on the golden orb. It gives a little, but it also seems to be kind of fixed in space. And you're basically holding onto the orb with your hands. Your legs are on the inside of this, and you're basically running in a circle around the orb as this thing is spinning around. You got your hands on it. Your hands are really. I got it! I got it! What do I do now? Shit. There's some give to it. If you put some force, you could move the orb, but it's not like you can just tuck it under your arm and go. Uh, gonna push on it a little bit. See what happens? Uh... You can like, you push it up a bit, which gives you more room to stand up straight. So I like, got it held above your head as it's like, it's giving enough weight suspended in the air that you can keep pushing against it as this thing is spinning around. So like when the, your feet, when you're basically pointing directly downwards, your hand's still on it. You're able to support yourself as you're just very much hamster wheeling in here. <laughs> Guys, what does he do now? It's <laughs> a really good question. We didn't think this part out. <laughs> she was just like, oh gosh. What's the what's the consistency of the orb? Yeah, what does the orb feel like? Uh, now, is, it, it, is that Zen yelling that out to my Kagamon? <laughs> yeah. What is the consistency of the orb? <laughs> kind of like a softish jelly candy, to be honest. Like, it's got some squish. It's like one of those... G gummies, the the the, the ones shaped like uh, bears. Squish it. Okay. He's gonna squish it. <laughs> All right. Give a squish of the orb. Make a squish. What am I gonna make you do for this? 
is a great Roll the question. <laughs> you know, do a squish. Also, check. just to reference, I'm pretty sure none of you guys are Saber's family, right? None of us are what family? Savers. Don't think so. Mm-hmm. No, it's the water one because this is all like deep savers terrain, basically because of the ice. Sorcery mod would be okay, but sorcery mod is not confident in the situation all the same. Sorcery mod is not a combatant and is very interested in the preservation of their own life. Uh, anyway, you've got this orb. You give it a big squish, as big as you can. <laughs> it just pops. Whoops. It. Pops and oh, <laughs> the golden energy inside of it kind of surges a bit and then runs down your arms and you've basically got these golden tattoos down both arms now. Um, I think this looks like nothing. You also have nothing that you're holding onto in the air now, and so as this platform is continuing <laughs> to spin around, you're having much more difficulty keeping yourself wedged in this little hole in the center here. You you just hear the distressed shouting. Of words running together that sounds like, oh god, this is what happened to you! <laughs> oh, that was unexpected. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Clive puts another arrow into the platform because it. Clive senses it was beginning to pick up speed again, and it kind of slows down to the speed they lowered it to originally, but they can't get it slower than that. <sighs> <laughs> if I if I touch the ice with my hands, what happens? Uh, you like stick a hand out while you're kind of running and placing here and try and grab purchase, and your hand is just sliding around. It's really difficult. Uh... Like the, the, gold, the gold patterns in there don't appear to be doing anything at this point. Okay, um, these are really cool, but they're not helpful, so I'm just. <sighs> My Gavin just fucking popped an egg yolk on their arms, and that's all we got. <laughs> Maybe letting the idiot of the party go over here was the best strategy. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a terrible hamster wheeling. Oh gosh. Does anyone have anything they can contribute to help out here? <laughs> uh, I don't think I did. <laughs> I mean, outside of doing, like, the exact same kind of check a second time to try and figure out a good time for my Galgamon to try and get out of there, that's about... Because <laughs> Inumon and Up got nothing, so I'm working off a Derek school <laughs> skill set at this point. Alright, uh... You can do that if no one else has anything they can super... contribute to. Oh, I'm checking Jeff has got nothing. <laughs> God, why do yeah, none of us have like a cool harpoon attack? Hold on. Wait, hold on. Uh, never mind. Wait, no, wait, no, wait. I don't. What is, what is Mont Galgamon's charge move specifically? Is it something cool like a rocket pack? Yeah, it's Mock Spiral. Then do that. Can I do that? Can I use Mock Spiral? To get out of here. You can suddenly try. You have a, you have a right. cool rocket backpack. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mark, uh, you, you can kind of see in the distance, like, like a flit, like a glow starting to come from, like, the bottom of the rocket. Oh, what right. Would I, was that just an attack? Would it just be a regular attack? Yeah, you'd make an attack roll, roll and depending on how hey, accurate it is, we'll see how well you deal at getting out of the situation and back to where you came from. Just in case, okay. everybody, make make like a path in the middle. This is Derek. Ah, uh, guys, get out of the way! I'm gonna charge over. Hopefully, that would be so accuracy. You want, let's just move some of you guys. Yeah, up into the wings. So it'd be so nine. Steps out of the way. There Ninety-six we go. greater than five, I think. Uh, you can use your Chrome Digizide weapon to strengthen that by two if you want. Oh, sure. Because this is not like a big combat thing. So that'll be 11, that'll be 11 D6. Yep. 11 D6, Jesus. That's so many. <laughs> Mock Algamon is here for one thing. 
fight. You also have huge power and overkill. So yeah, this is, if I get any ones, I'll just slap them. Or twos. Of yeah, the ones or twos. Uh, I got one two, so I will roll that as well. Still, that's one a good two. lot of successes. Yeah. But it could be and one more. Hey! Six successes. It is one more. Okay, so as this thing is spinning around, you adapted to keeping in it, even as like intense as it is. So because of your jetpack partially, you're able to make like hovering jumps for a second as it spins around in every rotation. You put your foot down and leap again as it spins further around you. But uh, as one spins around, you land with both feet, you press yourself against it. As it reaches about halfway up, you launch yourself. As you go out over the darkness, the wind that's blowing upwards catches you and pushes you up again. There's enough of it to push you upwards and you lift up high over this ice and you come swinging over it. As the you head over the ice, the wind cuts out for it and you just powered by your jetpack again. And as you're going by, you almost overshoot again, but you like slam the jetpack in reverse and you basically grind down into a flight of jetpack flame that's slowly lowering down in the middle of the area. <gasps> Land down struck by the others. Got these golden arms. Yeah, and he's gonna be like, yeah, I did it! And then he's gonna be like, look at me! My arms! What does it mean? Uh, can I scan them? <laughs> Please. Uh, you give your digivice, you get your digivice out and give it a scan, and it picks up that it's Mark Galgamon. I don't know, have you seen Mark Galgamon before? No, I haven't. Oh. You get the basic details of Mark Galgamon, and the digivice also indicates that there is a, another digital signal with Mark Galgamon at the same time. So there's like two things in the same place. Hmm. It doesn't give me like a a digital uh, crest, a Digimon's name, does it? No. It's just like another signal. God, it's gonna be. I'm gonna be mad when it's like you just popped a fucking Mecha Seedramon's fish egg and now it's gonna fucking murder us. It looks like a big old row. Can you maybe control them now? He's gonna like punch his arm forward and go stop. All right. Uh, give me a bit check. Three d six plus four. Three d six plus four. Okay. <laughs> you give it your best command, and nothing you can see within range changes. Doesn't look like a positive on that one. Hmm. So no more orb. Sorry. No, not your fault. I told you to squish it. <laughs> yeah. So hey, sorcery mon. What that do? Well, whatever it. It's part of the key to controlling this location, and you've successfully brought it here in some form if we could extract it back into its original form we might be able to manipulate it i'm not sure how to separate it out of you uh so i don't know how to over... unsquish <laughs> so Shimon checks over to uh derek like uh you were the one with the closest connection are you able to do anything if I look at my Digivice, is it anything different? <laughs> or is it just what uh, it always says when it's Ma Mark Galgamon? It's got the basic connection details for Mark Galgamon. The Digivice has... Have I written what the Digivice is? I don't know. Well, it's got the basic details, and uh, kind of like Zen, who also scanned it, you can see that there's a secondary piece of data there. But it's also, because it's your Digivice specifically, uh, you can also see that there's a awaiting upload signal on that. So it's like it's waiting for something to be done with this extra data on Mac Galgamon that a Digivice can't handle on its own. Huh. 
we already did tried. You we tried punch and say stop. Uh. Hmm. What were you saying, Zen? Would uh, D Digivolving do anything? Maybe. I mean, like, Mont Galgamon's arms aren't that beefy in lower forms. Maybe it'll just fall right off. <laughs> Listen, I don't or know how this works. Could right further. That seems like that could be bad. Hmm. From certain perspectives. I mean, you're the one that had a dog that went evil. I don't want my dog to go evil. I didn't think he went evil. I think he just got mad. Hey, my dog, do you different. feel mad right now? Hello. Um. He's kind of looking at his arms and he's like... Not any more than usual! Anything else, like... Maybe it's a different kind of thing. It's not an armor chunk. Uh, does Makagalgamon feel any different? No. Not it feels really. like normal Makagalgamon. I just feel like I want to go, but I always want to go. Uh... -oh. Uh -oh. I guess maybe try D ditch evolving and hope it doesn't take your whole body over. Okay. So you're gonna turn into Galgamon or Galmon? Let's go all the way down to keep as much space as possible. Alright. Grab Galmon. He's a little reluctant about it because he's like, I only got to be big for like five minutes, but. <laughs> okay. So Mark Algamon digivolves again, and as digivolves, the, um, like, data mix-up, there's a golden glow to it, which is different from, like, the normal data. And as Mark Algamon shrinks back down into Galgamon's size, the golden glow kind of pops off and forms the orb floating over your heads. I unsquished it! Hmm. That actually worked. Wow! Galmon, so excited, <laughs> re-squishes it. <laughs> no. God. He does, like, pat his hands on it, but they're much smaller now. Uh, it's floating about eight feet off the ground. So oh, he can't even reach it. So he's, like, just, he's just, he's just, like, jumping, like, towards it, not actually reaching it. Galmon, sure you can still work. <laughs> See, Derek, you had nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. Does the Digivice confirm that everything's fine? Uh, you check your Digivice again, and whatever the extra data attached to Mac Algamon was, it's not showing on the Digivice anymore. Okay. So that's better than it could have been. Okay, now what do we do? <laughs> it's still no, like... What do you guys do? Eight feet up in the air. I mean, try... Uh... Do I get any sort of signal from it? From, uh, my computer? This shit got uh, Wi-Fi? You check your computer, you're not directly getting anything from it, but in the digital world, most of the time, your computer, you pick things up by routing through your Digivice to your computer. So you right. use your Digivice to scan and connect to things, and your computer does extra processing on it. Oh shit, yeah, can we actually just scan? Can I just scan it? You hold your Digivice up to it, and this little beam of light comes out of the Digivice and hits the orb, and the orb glows golden more, and then it darkens to purple, and a few things change all around you. Uh, so let me make some notes here and there about things. So uh, this, that's a square, I want to be like three line. Uh, that is the wrong color, no one did that. Let me get a nice yellow. So this platform here was basically spinning almost like a vertical shaft of blocks facing away from you. It starts turning towards you as well. And as it does so, you see a little pillar of ice in the middle of it. And mounted in the pillar of ice is another one of those golden orbs. Hmm. 
Uh, I'll ping as well. Basically, these three interconnected pieces have started like move their out and then in again. They're like fluctuating in and out. So they're moving around a bit. This, the big block that you pull to the gold orb from again, basically just get goes right up into the ceiling and kind of locks into the ceiling over. Uh, this little guy just goes spiraling off into the abyss and a few of these others change their movement patterns as well. And it looks like it's going to be maybe generally difficult but possible to get over to this area now. Whereas beforehand, it's very difficult to get to. Oh, we got it. Away from kind of. Kind of. Just to double, like, you can't, we can't scan the, the orbs from the, the, the distant orbs from where we are, right? You hold out your digivice to it, the distance is too far. Okay, just che just checking. <laughs> God, it would be hilarious while... if that first one we could have hit, though. Just like... <laughs> while all of this is going on, everyone's having athletic feats and dealing with, you know, computer checks and that. Uh, Eleanor, who hasn't been contributing very much, I'm just going to make her roll her mage. Oh, no. Oh, no! Eleanor's <laughs> mage torment is called I Still Relevant, and she's very afraid of being unneeded or left behind. I'm gonna fight. <laughs> Just in general. <laughs> All right, so it is three six for the jetpack. <laughs> plus I'm willpower gonna... minus unmarked. So her willpower is six. She's got seven unmarked boxes. So three d six minus one, and I have oh. to meet or exceed a ten. Come on, Grandma. There you go. Nice. A little reassures herself that everyone else is working hard and she might not be doing a lot now, but you know, she helped out a lot before and she'll be going it too. So Yay. she marks off one box on her major torment and her inspiration increases to three. It might oh. help to see that some other people are also just kind of vibing yeah. while this is happening. There's a lot of some people standing around, some people being active. Yeah, Choco's just chilling. <laughs> Choco's just vibing. Yeah. Clive, seeing how everything went, is pretty excited now about uh, keeping things going. It's like, I, I, th I think we can get over there. We can get to we can get to the next one. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Reassured by Galmon's successes with the first one. Yeah, I mean, why not? So how fast were these ones off to our left going? Uh, these ones are spinning pretty slowly, but they're also moving a lot. So, like, these two are basically moving out into uh, further away. So imagine if you're looking at this dead on, like not from above, but just looking directly at it. The one on the right is moving further out to the right, and the one on the left is moving further out to the left, and then they're coming towards each other again. It's fairly repetitive movement, but they're spinning slowly at the same time, and they're moving out and in as well. Man, this would be a good time for anything, any of our Digimon to be able to fly. <laughs> yeah! Yeah. Didn't take flying, Chief. Clive looks over to you and goes, Choco, Choco, can I try? I, I think I... Alright, I believe in you. Alright. Do you want to do a direct, just to provide your direct bonus for dodge, essentially? Yes. Just to help yes. Clive out. Absolutely. Right. I'm going to say this support lets Clive roll with agility instead of ram. So I'm going to give Clive a 3d6 plus 7 as Clive sets up on the edge here and just starts running at the ice, intending to parkour. Clive sets out and begins sliding, but is striding confidently because Galgamon did it. And if Galgamon, Mark Galgamon can do it, Clive can do this. Clive steps out onto this piece of ice, and this ice is kind of just turning around in a circle. And as it's turning around, Clive sets to the balance, but the turn is swinging them more this way, and Clive can't get enough purchase to go back here. So Clive holds on as much as they can when it's coming around, and then is going to make a jump from this point when it swings around to this point here as it gets here. Uh, Clive jumps and the wind catches them, and I'm going to make Clive do a body check to see how they handle the wind. 
Uh, Clive kind of just gets caught by the wind with their smaller body and starts like, uh, like being blown up into the ceiling overhead. They drop over this area that's spinning where the wind is, drops down, and then it spins again and the wind catches them. And Clive's kind of just being thrown around by the wind and caught over this for a bit. Oh my gosh, Clive, be careful. Clive's just kind of caught in the windstorm right now. Oh. Shoko is like fretting. She's just like, oh gosh. Is anyone else really going to try and do anything in this situation? <laughs> I don't know if I have any way to manipulate this as either the Bergamon or the Evos. Uh, I don't I think just, I can like, get over there. Even if I went back to Mark Galgamon, I couldn't get over there, I don't think. I will say, Ferdramon both. Not for usually flying, but Ferrigemon has wings and a bigger body, so it's possible to do gliding in this high wind situation. Ooh. It comes to how well you control this and how well you make everything work. <laughs> okay. Um, Bergamon's gonna uh, turn to Stella and be like, I th I'm gonna go help out. Uh, all right. All right. Be careful. Yeah, you too. Um, and then it's gonna digivolve into up to Fear Jamon. Yep. Clive also has wings, so Clive's doing their best, but they are caught in the wind right now, which is a problem. Right. But, okay, Bergamon is up to Fear and what is Fear Jamon going to be doing? Um, Fear Jamon is, I think, I don't know if, do you guys think this is a bad idea? Uh, Fear Jamon's basically gonna launch his big, beefy body and try and catch Clive. He doesn't have like a a rush or um, a charge attack, but just kind of try to but he bounce have jump, into... so. Yeah, but try and bounce into Clive to get both of them out of or get him out of the wind. Does that make sense? Yeah, say so if you land on the ice, you can always just jump again afterwards. Yeah. Just do don't it. land on not the ice. Alright, I'm gonna... Go for that. Uh, Fieri Jamon has a 10 movement and jump. Yep. So one, two, three, four. Question. When I'm doing this for a large creature, is the, like, kind of center space, like, would this be considered one space? No. Okay. So think... this would be one, this would be two. I think, okay. with, I think with 10, you can just... I think you're just shy, so like if you take a step first. Once you well, step off the dirt, though, you have to contend uh, yeah. with the ice as well, and I will make you do a body check just to see how you handle the, the ice. Um, I'm gonna jump from the ice, I think. Hold on, let me From check. the ice or from the dirt? From the dirt, sorry. Yep, okay. Five, six, so, seven, eight, nine. Where's the ruler? Yeah. Scoop Clive yeah. up in a pain. one up here. All right, so as you just jump and your wings, as you beat them back, the rush of wind blows over you guys. And just the heat from Fairy Dramon takes a moment to remind you how cold it is as soon as Fairy Dramon is moving forward. Uh, Fairy Dramon arcs forward, wings spread as the wind blows up through this gap here as this platform is spinning around and it sends for raises Fujimon up pretty high. Uh, not quite as high as Clive, but Fujimon like is beneath Clive as well and is able to hmm. Fujimon, you're basically directly beneath Clive right now. Okay. Um uh, but because you're beneath it, you're actually blocking a lot of the wind. So as the wind blows, you are Clive. It's protected from that. Clive begins drifting down towards within your reach and basically just grabs onto uh, your back or something. Clive settles yeah. onto his so I grab throw onto. Up the, uh, I hold up the big uh, saucepan. All right. Is the saucepan yeah. hot? No, not unless I'm using it to attack. Okay. So Clive lands on the saucepan as you guys are... When the wind isn't there because the platforms are spinning around, you're able to basically spread your wings out or bring them in, and you've got a bit of control. 
Uh, make a ram check, so 2d6 plus 4, to see if you can use the wind to maneuver yourself, and depending on it, I'll tell you what you can do. Okay. If only it was bits. If only it was brains. Uh, All right. The so, power. <laughs> no. Maybe not. Oh, that's accuracy. Yeah, no, no. I don't think you've really got any specific abilities here that can help you out. The last snow. Uh, so the chill of the wind is getting to you. Like you're flexing your wings in and out to control when the wind is catching you and when you're dropping. But because of the chill of your wind, you're, of the wind, you're actually having problems with your wings a bit, and you're beginning to drip, drop down a little. You're losing confidence by as the wind carries you forward. Which what, what were you trying to do? Uh, just trying to grab on and basically fall down, I guess. Land you're just trying to ice. lower down to the ground. Yeah. All right. Uh, you are able to land down on this platform as. You guys, uh, as it comes in close, but immediately your grip on it goes and you feel yourself sliding and you're sliding towards the edge. You don't have a moment to catch your breath. What do you do as you reach the edge? Uh, ha, ha. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Clive is kind of like on the top of the frying pan. Um, Fjergemont's going to try and like slam it into the ice. It's a chrome digizoid weapon, so yep. his thoughts are just, I need an anchor. We need an anchor right now. All right, give me an attack roll just to show me how you do with that. I guess that's just a melee attack? Yeah. Okay. And if you're using your chrome digizoid weapon modifier, you can buff that up to an 11d6 accuracy. Greater than five, right? Yeah. Wait, I did this wrong once again. Uh, four successes though. Okay. Did you have huge power? Yes, I do. So uh, you can so reroll that one. one. You never know. You never know. Nope. Oh. Alas. Okay, so as you slam down, you heat up and you quickly heat up and slam down the frying pan as Clive kind of jumps off the frying pan and onto your back and it digs into the ice and you feel it wedge a little as you hold onto it. The this block of ice, it's continuing to move out across the abyss as well, but it's also turning slowly. So as it's spinning around, you're clutching onto this um, frying pan, but you doing your best to hope that you've dug in enough that as it turns around, you can keep your balance on this. Hmm. Uh, Clive spots an angle from here and doing their best is going to try and jump out into the abyss and try and land down near this orb. So I'm going to make Clive do another agility check. Plus four. Uh, 16 is pretty solid. Clive launches off of you out over the abyss. The wind catches them, but then Clive reaches over the ice and the wind drops again, pulls in his wings and swoops down, he hits the ground and begins sliding immediately, digs his claws into the ground, has difficulty with that, reaches out, digs his claws into the ice pillar as he's sliding and grabs on the ice pillar and wraps his hands around it tight. It is bitterly cold. I'm marking off two wound boxes of Clive as he latches onto and holds onto that ice pillar for dear life. Oh. All right, it's in an ice pillar. <laughs> All right, is there anything else anyone can contribute in this situation? <laughs> Joko's screaming internally. It's not really freaking, freaking out. Um, <laughs> Gamon can't do anything, he's just here. <laughs> uh, Alright. Well, it's in a big ice pillar, right? 
Hmm? I said it's in a big ice pillar, right? Uh, it's mounted in the top of the ice pillar. The ice pillar isn't too big. Like, it comes up to about Clive's height, and then the orb is set inside of it. Uh, which is what allows the orb to basically spin around with the thing. So when you first said that, I was thinking, I was picturing, like, in an ice column, and I'm like, well, our fire person's already over there. Alright, Clive is going to, while holding on, use Divine Lightning Claw to try and shatter the column as this block of ice spins around enough that Clive can get his balance. So that's just, uh, going to use Chrome for that, so 96. Oof. Clive doesn't have any rerolls. Uh, Clive slams his claw full of charged lightning energy into the column and it cracks and it splinters but it doesn't give way and Clive has to struggle to pull his claw out of that and takes another point of cold damage just dealing with all of this and then taking a cue from Mark Galgamon Clive's going to attack quickly again too quickly for Chrome Digizoid to reload uh does a hit uh one plus Clive's damage of... Damage is seven, that's solid damage. Yeah, I'd say just being able to hit in this situation. Clive slams a paw down on the golden orb and it pops and that golden energy just radiates down Clive's arm. Clive's got it on board. You got it! Good job! <laughs> But now how do you get back over here? Yeah, the, the situation has gotten pretty intense and because of like all the cold, Clive's beginning to lose confidence. If anyone can provide any support to Clive, whether it's Friedramont here or if anyone else can do anything overall. Um, I can, can you... Oops, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking because some of this stuff is like, I don't know if, I don't know if Mark at Galgamon could actually do anything if I got I don't think I can get over there. You got the jetpack. Um, I think Gary Dramond pulls out from on top of his frying pan or saucepan or whatever. Uh, Clive's favorite burger. I don't know what that might be. I got one. I got something here for you, bud. Uh, just gotta make it. Maddie to tell us. <laughs> You're just doing your motivation. Come get your burger. It's a good- I got your favorite, sashimi! Say shimi! And then I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> toss that over for, um... I don't know if Fury would be very, uh, helpful, but actually shield. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so you're actually sending it to Clive. Yes. Okay. So this is a one-stop ticket to Flavortown. Yep. Alright, um... slam that bird. Give me that attack roll. Okay, that is a... I think that's 11? Yes, because the... Will I get it right this time? Yes! Uh, I got one reroll. Alright, since this is targeted on Clive, I'm going to have to make Clive do a dodge roll for this. How many successes did you get? Four? Pretty uh, decent. Yep. So Clive's dodge is seven. Two successes, and I reroll once and two. So there you go, it hits. So as Clive is basically holding on and struggling as this ice block is just turning around. He hears Ferrigimon called out, sees the burger coming, takes a running jump, you know, wide open mouth for the burger as it's incoming. Swallows it whole. The shielding around Clive. How much shielding does that give? Uh, it's a lot. Hold on. Yeah, it's a one turn thing because yeah. you got that. But for the moment, the shield wraps around Clive, and Clive feels warm and reassured as the wind blows up hard again and blows Clive high upwards again. Like this block was a ways down from Pridramon, but the wind takes Clive up to here, and Clive spreads his wings and makes it back to Pridramon. It's a five, by the way. I'm oh, sorry, okay. eight, eight. All right. Reading wrong. So Clive has successfully made it back to you. 
What can you do in this situation, Fairy Juman? Uh, to get back? Or, oh, for me. Unfortunately, um, your body stat is terrible, so you can't just throw Clive. Right. I also... Is it a body check to jump? Uh, it's... A, it's RAM to control your jump, and it's uh, CPU to handle moving on the ice. Actually, speaking of, make a CPU check for me right now, because oh, you've been yeah. dealing with of ice as it's been rolling around. So 3d6 yeah. plus 4. Hmm, not so hot. Uh, as you grab Clive, your other hand, which is holding on to frying pan, you feel a shift and the frying pan finally runs out of stick into the ice and you guys both tumble down off of this and are then caught by the wind and you are thrown upwards and buffeted around by this. Uh, Clive's shielding impacts it. Virgimon, you take three points of cold damage. Okay. As you guys are basically caught in the wind maelstrom, basically in this section between you, between you all. Mm. Okay. That's my Cl Clive has the orb, right? Clive has the orb on board. Okay. <laughs> Clive gets there, touches the orb, runs back. No, Clive smacked the orb and popped okay. it and absorbed it into his arm, like um, Mac Alderman did. That's what I thought happened, but I was just like, that'd be fun. Okay, so we've sent everyone that has any proficiency in moving through open air out there. Mm-hmm. They are pretty far out there. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, boy. <sighs> In a maelstrom. It's a difficult situation. I don't know if there's anything I can do here. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I can't. I can't make it over to them. Wait, are we still like holding on to each other, or have we? Yes, you've got each other. Okay, cool. Whew. Wait, I might actually be able. The only thing I can think of is taking a running start, then doing my charge attack to knock into you guys onto a platform. That <laughs> seems like a bad idea. That's know. odd. That's how I got over here. Because I can move 10 spaces in action. Also, this isn't really combat, so we're not really taking turns. Too terribly much here. Um, <sighs> unless anyone's got a better idea than running tackle. So I would like to hear that. <laughs> I have an idea, but since I'm the GM, I'm, you know. Uh, <laughs> Eleanor might have an idea, I just don't know if she would have it because. You don't uh, know if Eleanor, Eleanor would have it or if Taurus Eleanor would have it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Eleanor just pops up around her. So, we just need to get a digivice to the orb, right? Yeah! And then things change? It seems like it. You gotta you think Galmon's like, takes oh, We're gonna throw a digivice at! I'm not throwing oh my digivice. Galmon's not very smart, but when it comes to, like, stupid combat maneuver, I'm here for you. <laughs> I think at this point, Eleanor wants to contribute. So he goes up to Gal. You're very good at jumping as Matt Galgamon. Could you carry me to them? Yeah, of course. Derek takes a step All right, step Derek, back. let me get big again. Let's go. Derek takes a step Everyone back. Everyone else is free to call this a bad idea, but Eleanor has suggested it all the same. Derek is like, I've got nothing. She's just like staring, like trying not to like bite her nails, watching Clive and Sierra be stuck in the void. All right, so Derek, are you gonna help Galmon Digivolve again to try this out? Yeah, yeah. All right, let me just send Galmon off to the GM layer because I'll need Mac sooner or later. Mac Galgamon, Mac Galgamon Digivolves again, picks up Eleanor, 
gets ready for a running jump out to the orb. Uh, I think Clive can just DJ roll on their own, so as soon as Eleanor's out there, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> also, <laughs> I don't know when DM says that, by the way. Yeah, right. That's never uh, a scary moment. Derek, do you want to support Matt Galgamon with another perception check to give the best moment to go? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> While this is all going, uh, Clive's shield is out. I'm going to give Clive a little more cold damage and and this is 3d6. Three 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 more cold damage because this is pretty intense. 3d6 mm. plus perception. Like a circus fire. Yep. I'm not going to use my aspect again because I only got one more use of that, and that's all I have aspect wise, I think. That is fair. Okay. Shasha. Not the best. Not the best. Uh, Mac Algamon, mm-hmm. give me a. Uh, 3d6 plus 4. This is for your run, jump, do your best. 14 for both of you. Matt Kalkamon sets onto the ice and begins running. A whole, uh, how are you carrying, Eleanor? Um, probably, like, in one hand. And we're going to use the, uh, the jetpack for... Like, are you holding her against jump. your chest? Yes. Keep her okay. safe. So Michael Gormon starts running, slides, runs, jumps, the jetpack flares, Mac Algamon also caught by the wind. Uh, Eleanor is being shielded by Mac Algamon, but Mac Algamon takes cold damage, just two points to start with, and is basically cruising through. Doesn't come like directly up to it, but you guys are around each other. Eleanor calls out to Clive, uh, do you teach your fault, do you? Uh, all right, I control five, too. <laughs> yeah. You're both of them. Yeah. That's you. All right. Clive returns to Garamon form, and the golden orb pops out of Clive, just free hanging in the air as Eleanor holds out the Digivice to it, and a beam comes off of the Digivice and hits the orb as well. The orb darkens to purple like the first one does. Immediately, there's a shift under your feet as this entire ice platform begins turning at a diagonal. And you guys, despite being on the dirt platform Sorcery Mon is maintaining, begin sliding a bit as well. You look out over this entire region as the ice begins shifting around into positions that form a kind of twisting spiral that points all the way down into the very bottom. And at the bottom of which there is a golden glow in the very middle of the room at the very end of all of these ice platforms linked together in a spiral is one more orb. The wind catches and blows everyone in the middle of here around. You guys are not over the spiral here. You guys are sliding. All of the ice has connected into one big twisting spiral that just leads down around. Uh, uh, for, ready. You guys here, this is going to be a group skill check of agility and RAM to be able to control and slide as a group to make it all the way down there. In the immediate seconds where this begins, is there anything any of you want to do beforehand, whether it's Digivolve or set up anything at all? So we're sliding down a big spiral. You guys are all about to slide the spiral. Oh boy! Can we get a... Can I get a big dog? A tadoggin? Maybe. I'm just thinking big dog we all grab on. Just slide down. Can I make a dog you want? Yeah, what do you want? You want... Normal chunk or extra chunk? I think that's up to you, my man. I don't think either of them has much going as far as, like, a thing that would make... Like, I don't think there's a thing the second form has that would make it specifically better at this. So he might as well go full... Full size. Yeah. I mean, big boy, we can all fit on the big boy. Yeah, he's huge when he's biggest boy, right? Oh, yeah. Can we, can we all just 
get on the toboggan and slide All right. down. So as you guys are fighting, Zen just quickly indicates to Inumon to move, holds up a digivice, and Inumon shifts onto the ice, begins sliding first as the rest of you are trying to hold up to the ice, as quickly Inumon <laughs> sizes up to Nurikabemon, and one by one, each of you just grabs onto the dog as it begins to slide. <laughs> Kyoko's just like, ah! Oh gosh! Kyoko, Derek, Stella, Zen, uh, Sorcery Mon grabs on, but does not give any signal to the Digmon and leaves the Digmon sliding on its own. Uh, Bakumon, you kind of like float fly. This is still an awkward situation and you don't want to be caught over the wind. Do you latch on as well? How's Bakumon doing, considering the situation Eleanor's in? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm like, my concentration is fading pretty bad. Um, God, he's, he's over here. He's really trying to like scramble around, trying to see what's going on like El are you Helena are you sure this was a good idea absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> but there's not really how's Stella doing as well while she's done talking about Pokemon sorry Oh, Stella hates this. Stella hates everything about this. I think yeah. that's just a given. <laughs> Why'd you sign up for this, Stella? <laughs> that's a valid question. I'm not gonna get into that now. Um, Fair enough, someone can ask you later. <laughs> Alright, so is Bakamon grabbing onto Nurikabemon with the rest? Yeah. Alright. Uh, given Zen is the commander, I'm going to make a weird check with this, since it's Nurikabemon sliding. Uh, yeah. Zen, you've got an agility of five. Yeah. Hang on, there's a specific thing to do for this. There is, uh, section four, skills, combined skill checks. Working together, a human character and the Digimon partner able to overcome challenges, they were not alone. Uh, combined skill check, adding the modifiers for both human and Digimon together. Sure. So uh, Nurikabemon's RAM stat, which is plus three, and Zen's agility, which is plus five for a plus eight. Okay. Uh, Andy, since you're being the slider, give me a 3d6 plus eight. Okay. For sure. All right. So... We just get rid of these red lines because they are no longer relevant. They were fun for a second, but I'm the slider, which makes everyone else the slidees. Interesting. So as you set up, you begin sliding down on your coming on, just working the way around this ice path. It curves inwards. It's like the most deadly water slide because the water is frozen. <laughs> as you guys are just sliding around, there's enough of a curve ramp to it. Like there's no flat bottom to it. You are sliding on an angle and if you were flat you would be falling. But as you slide around you can see that these three up in the air are still being caught and thrown around by the wind. Uh, Frejimon and MacGalgamon, is there... Uh, oh, these four because five is here too. Yeah. And five. <laughs> is there anything any of you guys feel confident in trying to do as the winds just assault you? How close are we to the um, rest of the group? You're pretty much out in the middle of this thing. Like, directly below you is this golden orb far down. You guys have gotten yourself into an awkward position, unfortunately. Hmm. Can I try and use the jetpack to, like, gently push everybody over towards, like, land? Sure. It is propulsion based. You so. have a charge attack, so you do have a jetpack ability in this situation. 
So... Just everybody hold I'm on. Right now, while you've been buffeted in the air, like you didn't have, you hadn't caught hold of Fairy Drummond and Clive beforehand, but you've made it to them now. Like the four of you are all together out here in the middle of the abyss as this cold wind is rushing up through you and making it really difficult to move anywhere but be caught in this. You are, your jetpack and Fairy flames and your wings are giving you enough control that you're not being like forced up into the ceiling overhead, but it's also a very intense environment. Yeah. Uh, Mark Galgamon, give me a body check. So 3d6 plus 3. Could be worse. Could be better. All right, so you begin, which direction are you trying to push down? Are you trying to get towards this ice spiral or push downwards against the wind? Or what are you aiming for? Um, you, wait, you said there was an orb below us? Very far below. Oh, it's down here in the bottom. Okay. Um, basically, the main goal is just to try and get everybody onto land the again. So that, yeah. Okay, so you angle yourself. Uh, it's easier to go up with the wind than down, so you angle yourself upwards and you're trying to make it over toward here. You yes. see that Nuri Kabemon with everyone else has already slid around, just going around. So you guys are going to be the second round after that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to take you some time and you guys do take more cold damage from that. I'm just going to mark some and see if you guys get in a bad situation. Okay. Clyde is shivering very badly, but uh, Eleanor takes a little bit of cold damage, but not a huge amount because Mac Galgamon is keeping her close. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys do push upwards towards this slide and set up on it. And now I'm going to need a second group agility check from all of you to make sure that you guys can make the situation work. Okay. So... Uh, Digimon are going to roll Ram, and Eleanor is going to roll Agility. Okay, Ram. The combined agility me? of an old woman and Guy Fieri. So, <laughs> actually, Eleanor is, is comboing with... No, wait, no, she doesn't have a Digimon partner here with her. Clive's agility. That's bad. But... <laughs> oh, that's real bad. Oh, wait, hold on. Um, Agility? Oh, I guess it's not a... That's not the same. Ooh. That's fives. Oh my. And uh, Bridget, Fairy Dramon's Ram check. Yep. We're doing bad in the house tonight. <laughs> yeah, it could All have right, been so better. you guys get sliding after, but it is not a smooth you're, slide. You're having difficulty. It's not like Nuri Kabimon who's just sliding down, big dog belly. So while these guys are dealing with that situation, Nuri Kabaman, you are sliding around here. What did you roll before? 17? Uh, something like that. Yes. Okay. So you're holding it together well. Uh, Sorcery Mon is providing some ice magic to smooth things as it goes. It's still pretty difficult. And before you reach kind of the bottom of the ice slide, you go flying off into it. Your huge mass resists the winds, and you guys begin sinking downwards. Uh, you guys are first. slowly falling down through the abyss. There's no way to get back onto the slide with this, but the golden orb isn't too far away. Uh, whoever's closest to it tries the digivice. It's just a little bit away, but if you make a jump through the distance, you might be able to, leap of faith, get that orb. Get that orb. Who's got the best leap? Um, Who has the eight foot vertical leap? I've got I, I've got a ten foot like a ten square charge attack. Well, we need to get a. Do we need no, to get it's a you guys or? with Nuri Kabemon. Oh, with Nuri Kabemon. Ah, uh, Chuka. The four okay. humans, Bakumon, and Nuri Kabe is not. I mean, much in this let me go take a look at Ch Ch Choko. Also, um, as you guys are struggling on the ice, you see the Digmon just falling. <laughs> Actually, the, uh, Digmon's light enough that it gets pulled by the wind. We just see Digmon clanging against the ceiling repeatedly. Oh yeah, where's yeah, the... Digmon's up there. Where is uh, Sorcerer Sorcerer Mon? Is he with us? 
Yeah, oh, I didn't, he grabbed yeah, there he is. I didn't steal um, it first. What does a human's yeah, jump stat? You get an stat? if you want to grab on. Pardon? What would a human's jump stat be? Would that be athletics, or would that be... I'd put your jump at half movement, like anyone's jump. Okay, so that would be... I, I can move... I can jump three spaces. Yep. Does it round up or down? Uh, I think I it's down. It Actually, you know, I think Murakabe has an I odd number of movement. It rounds down. Because Nurikabe oh. has a speed of 11, and his jump height is 5, so... Well, Nurikabe's the one... Nurikabe's the platform. Oh yeah, I know, I'm, I'm just, I was just using him as the example to see what a jump height... If it gets halved or whatever. Oh, it yeah, is half he... rounded down. I also... Ha Derek also has a movement of 11, and therefore a jump of like 5. Could any of Bakumon's forms jump while carrying someone else to maybe help it out? Can you guys chain this? Can you chain jump? Can Bakumon uh... evolve, digivolve from that far away from... Oh, yeah, no, Eleanor's not with Bakumon. Whoops. Yeah, that's not happening. We didn't plan out this spread out, all the humans over here with these two Digimon, and then all the... Well, you know, these things happen. I didn't know what you guys were going to do. I set it up to make it interesting, and I did! Well, I mean, Derek, I think, might have the best leap here, but he also has a combined brave total of three. So, I don't know if he wants to do that jump. Well, Derek, are you, like, thinking about it and thinking, no, I don't want to? I think so. Roll your major torment for me. Okay. Uh, what is that again? Is that willpower? Willpower minus, minus unmarked boxes. So minus two. Yeah, negative two, baby. Ten or higher. Roll. So three d six minus two. Yep. Damn. All right, mark, a, mark your third box for that major torment. Take yeah. a point of inspiration. And Derek, your usual cowardice really drags you down. But for once, you're like, this, this is this isn't. I, I'm not I, going to be stopped this time. I, I guess the the cowardice is countered out by the oh wait, we're falling into a pit regardless. <laughs> yeah, you realize like this situation isn't going to get worse if I make this jump, and I'm the most confident that I could make that jump. So what do I roll to make that jump? Give me a athletics check. Okay, so athletics Three, six, is plus seven. body plus athletics. Nope, it's oh yeah, body plus athletics. Right, yeah. I say if if you want to be agility plus athletics, I'll no, no. Three d six plus seven. Do you want to use that point of inspiration you just got on that one? Sure. What does that do? That just makes me get to reroll that one, right? Yeah. So put your inspiration back down to one of three and, and then reroll roll that single one. Single D6. Yeah. Hey! You, that's a 24. <laughs> All right, Derek. Seeing this entire situation, you grit your teeth. You think this is the stupidest thing you've ever done, and you've done a lot of stupid things. And you jump for the <laughs> orb over the thing. You hold out your digivice to it. The beam of light stretches out and hits the digibyte. It hits the orb. The orb darkens to purple, and the wind rushing up through here stops. And you guys just floating in midair on nothing. There's no wind holding you up. There's no chill in the air. It's like everything's just stopped. And slowly this spiral of ice starts flattening out and rising up and as it rises up you see a floor rising up with it and it just flattens out and rises up and it catches you and it lifts you up and eventually this entire floor expanse is just a small room like the rooftop is maybe 10 feet over your head there is a bluish portal in the middle of the room and you guys are all just standing there breathing heavy cold as hell <laughs> but you've unlocked the way further down 
and Nurikabemon barely fits. <laughs> just want to oh, roll back. Uh, Clive has de digivolved to Salomon just by the buffeting of the. I think, like, all of you guys have de digivolved at least once, and you are all very cold and very tired. <laughs> This was a really intense situation, and you've been really knocked around. But for the first time, you know, this is a... The room's... Maybe it's just because you were in super cold before, but the room feels surprisingly temperate. And it's just a flat, dirt, small cave. There's no ice in here, there's no cold, there's no nothing. We're just in here. Oh, this Joker's just like wheezing. She's just like, <laughs> she's not really survived so far. The well, Digmon, that's... which is in a corner, just stands up and brushes some ice off of its body. <laughs> All right. Not bad. Galgamon is still carrying Eleanor, but in his scarf hands now. Uh, for the sake of who went through the ice, all of you guys who stuck with Nurikabemon were protected from the wind well from it. Derek, because you jumped out, I'm marking a wind box of the wind, wound box of the wind damage on you. Good thing so I had that tasty burger earlier. Yep. Uh, and as for the others who are caught in it, Eleanor is down to two or four because she... Put herself out there. She managed to get things going. Like, she helped save the day, but also... Ouch. Yeah. Uh, Gadamon is down to Salomon and is pretty cold and sad. <laughs> the others are also cold, but they can devolve into their rookie form further as well, and they can recover off of that. Has Salomon Clive taken any damage before? Nope. I okay. don't think so, no. We... Two wound boxes on that, so Clive as Salomon is at three of five. Uh, you guys can de digital further if you want, but right now this is the situation of things. Well, you got through it. Yeah. I just wonder, you said the ceiling was like 10 feet up, right? 10 to 12. Okay, yeah. Uh, Mark Alamon's going to drop down a level because yeah well neurocarbon one isn't standing out like neurocarbon one's flat on their back how tall is neurocarbon one if they're like lying down i mean he'll fit like that but he wouldn't be able to stand up you have to walk yeah, on yeah. all fours so he might as well could as one that does that neurocarbon one back down to inu keep them on drops off the others you're all able to reunite with one another just don't worry about this map it's not a thing anymore you've got nice flat ground beneath you Well, that went well. <laughs> no more orbs. No orbs. <sighs> Sorcery one just looks over. He's like, "That is not something I could have done on my own." And <sighs> starts uh, to like hold Clive in her arm. Cat. <laughs> Clive's very cold and digs right into your jacket. <laughs> Yeah, come on, back over here like, Derek, did you see how cool I was? Yeah, it was good. Was good. Yeah, I am the best boy. It is me. <laughs> Eleanor kind of sits down hard and breathes heavy for a bit. Pretty dope, Grandma. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes we have to do what we have to do. Yeah, I guess that's true. All right. Baby's I think we'll do save he's gonna do. heading through that portal for the next session. It's been a while now. I think we're all starting to run down a bit. Yeah, getting sleep, uh, getting the sleeps. But you overcame this challenge. Well done, everyone. Dun that was a, right. a fun ice. That's probably the most fun ice puzzle. I have had yeah. to do that. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, when it comes to the tabletop, you get a lot of flexibility in it. Everyone I wasn't likes... sure what you guys would want to do. I just wanted to find out. Everyone likes the penguin slide race. <laughs> <laughs>
No one likes the invisibility cap maze. <laughs> All right. We did well, and we've gotten through this challenge. And next challenge, the portal down awaits. Chaos, chaos, chaos! <laughs> Fuck yeah, boss. <sighs> All right, I'm going to go get some dinner, but it was really, really fun. Yeah, I need I'll food, see too. you guys next time. See ya. Next time. All right, catch you. Thanks for running. This was a lot of fun, as always. No problem. Have a good one. Yep. Night slash Night. good day. See ya. You still recording, Andy? Oh, yeah, I should probably stop that. <laughs> Bye, guys.